Christina. We're, we're missing Christina's. We're missing Christina. And Christina. And Christina. <laughs> I know Christina got the, uh, I know Christina got the, um, the right way to get on because I sent it to her. Oh, there's Scott Tuttle. Good. Is everybody here? There's Christina. We need one more Christina. Do we have our other Christina? There she is. Okay, we're all here. And it's a little after 7.30, so I will go ahead. Um, where am I? Okay. Um, I like to be like a... Can you hear? Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yep. All right, um, I would like to call the Morongo Valley Community Services District Board of Directors special board meeting of November 30th, 2021 to order. Can we have a roll call, please, uh, Mr. Yearsley? Gail Swart. Here. Christina Brooke. Here. Lori Klimowitz. Here. Johnny Tolbert. Here. Christina Gorky. Here. Um, Lori, would you um, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Sure. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we normally... Uh, on the agenda, we have the public comments, but I what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, let our director of operations explain a lot of the things that um, he has been researching for a possible action for the Morongo Valley Fire Department. And then um, when he's done, it would be a better time to have everyone who wants to speak to, uh, to that'll be a good time to hear them. So, um, 
you will all have an opportunity after we know what what we have to offer is on the table. Um, Mr. Yearsley, would you like to uh, start this? And and uh, Jim, would you mute everybody and let Mr. Yearsley um, give his presentation, please? Yes, I will. Thank you. Okay, so um, this all depends on what the board action is tonight. These are just um, things that I have researched so the board can make their decision. Um, questions came up about our uh, our supplemental in, uh, supplemental uh, tax money that comes in, whether it would uh, still be given to us if we were to close 30, 60, or 90 days or if we close permanently or whatever we do. So I did give a call to them. And for the last three days, I've been working with them on that. The lady that is in charge of our uh, program uh, researched it with her boss and another person. And they have come to the, the point of after reading the resolution that uh, at a temporary close from 30 to 90 days, would not we would not lose any money from the tax uh, initiative that was put in. So <coughs> on a permanent basis would be a different story, but uh, we would have to get with them on that. But a temporary close, we would still receive the exact same amount of money with not losing any. Um, and that being said, then if, if it was voted on by the board to do a temporary close, I have contacted uh, CAL FIRE which I um, had talked with Scott Tuttle. Chief Tuttle is on tonight. So we will be able to ask him questions if you have any questions about it. But um, on a 30 to, to 90 day closure, uh, we've discussed and he's working on finishing up the contract for the board to look at. But in, in, you know it could start at any time before that time and then we could uh, Get it finished off. So after tonight, he should be able to have it done. Uh, he can speak on that if anybody has any questions. Um, Gary, that be, yes. Gary, let me. Uh, it's it's county fire, not Cal fire. Oh, I'm sorry, county fire. Yeah. I, my mistake. I had that on my mind because they will be the ones doing the uh, dispatching. So I'm sorry. So anyway, yeah. it is uh, Chief Tuttle with uh, county fire, and so they would they would be able to cover our district um, with an engine or what uh, for the medical calls, it would be an ambulance that, that they would be using and they would be using it um, to run all the medicals. And then the engine would come on all the car, uh, you know, accidents on the highway, uh, fires, wildland fires, residential fires, even smoke checks and stuff they would send out an engine for that. So the engine would run on all those and the ambulance would run as a squad on all of the medicals. Uh, the charge for those um, comes out to uh, 623 for an engine and 161 for a squad. Now, what we talked about is uh, for calls, we have about one and a half calls a day average. So, um, Chief Tuttle uh, and his group figured it out that up to 50 calls would, would cost $18,000 a month, which is really a very good deal because I think it costs us a little bit more to even do those. But um, up to 50 calls, they would run that at $18,000. Any of the calls that would go over four hours, like maybe a large residential or a large wildland fire, or even maybe even some car accidents that went over four hours would charge at the hourly rate until they were completed with those calls. Um, that that would be contracted with them. If there was if it went over the ninety days, then it would be more. Uh, we would have to figure out a different contract with them, or if it was permanent. So this is just to get it started for tonight. Um, 
Chief Tuttle, uh, I don't know if you had something you wanted to add, uh, but that's yeah. pretty much what I had on that part of it for the board. Yeah, thank you, Chief Yearsley. I appreciate that. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Scott Tuttle. Uh, I am the Assistant Fire Chief in charge of the Morongo Basin. Um, and yeah, Chief Yearsley and I have been talking for the last couple of days and, and most of what he said, he got it, he did a pretty good summary of what we talked about. The only change or difference I would say is uh, the number of calls, we um, doesn't necessarily mean 50 calls a month. I basically will provide the service regardless of the number of calls. The, the difference would be if it, like Chief Yearsley said, if it was a significant incident that took more than four hours, then we would charge that call specifically on an hourly basis. But whether we run 20 calls in a month or 50 calls or 60, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, we're gonna run the calls for that flat rate of $18,000. Um, and then any significant incidents take longer than four hours, we'll charge the hourly rate um, at those rates that Chief Yearsley mentioned. Uh, also, I just wanna make sure that it's clear that this is not a long-term solution uh, this does not reflect the true cost of providing fire service, fire rescue and EMS service. Uh, this is basically just to recoup some of the costs that we would incur by running those calls in Morongo Valley. So um, this is not a, not a solution, it's a temporary emergency plan so that we can continue services to the residents of Morongo Valley. Um, everything Chief, else I think we've covered, yeah. Uh, Chief Tubler was one of the thing that I did not mention that a duty officer when needed would be dispatched by you guys also. Yeah, yeah. So I can go into that a little bit also. Um, so we would, um, for any fires, uh, significant traffic collisions, anything that we would normally send a battalion chief on in our jurisdiction, we would send a battalion chief, a chief officer. Uh, to those calls in Morongo Valley as well. And that's included in that that one that, that $18,000. Um, also, we're, we will provide a monthly report of the calls that we run. Uh, I can attend these CSD meetings or have one of my battalion chiefs attend one of the, the CSD meetings uh, while we're providing the service to give you monthly updates. <clears throat> what else did we talk about? Um, And also, Chief Tuttle, it'll it. all be run out of the station in Yucca Valley, correct? Yes, yeah. So the services will be provided from, from Yucca Valley. We're, um, we'll be re responding from there, uh, which uh, also reminds me of the ambulance running as a squad. So Morongo Basin Ambulance has exclusive operating rights in Morongo Valley. So they would still be the transport provider. Uh, we would just provide our ambulance to get that paramedic on scene quicker than waiting for MBA from Morongo Valley or from uh, Joshua Tree or having an engine respond down there when really it's a medical call and, and a paramedic on an ambulance would uh, provide the same service. Uh, also getting back to the dispatch, um, the dispatch, because this is a temporary solution, we're not gonna change any of the 911 systems. So 911 calls will still go to CAL FIRE and then CAL FIRE will transfer them to us to get dispatched. And as we move forward, we'll work out the details, but I've already um, kind of done some high level and talks with the, our dispatch center and that they're, it's, a, it's doable. That process is, cap is, is doable, we can do that. I think that's about it. I'd be happy to answer any, any questions if anybody has any, or Chief Yearsley, if you, Think of anything else we talked about that I missed. I think that's pretty complete of everything that we've gone over and we can either do it now or we can wait till the public comment time if they want to ask questions at that time, whichever is fine with me. Yes, if you if you have some more things that you want to um, uh, give us the information on Chief Yearsley, go ahead and do that now and then we will call upon people to make their okay. comments. Okay, so basically that covers um, everything for a temporary close, a long-term close is gonna call for a lot more work with uh, the county and with our Wildan um, thing. But right now with Wildan and, and our monies that come in from our supplemental, that would uh, under a temporary up to 90 days, 
would work under that. We would not lose anything. If it goes more permanent or any other way, we have to get with them uh, and make sure that it, it would still cover or tell us if it would not cover. But right now, that's all they could guarantee me was a temporary close. So that's that's all we've got for that part of it. Um, obviously, if it was a permanent close, we have a lot of other major issues that would have to take care of. And um, I can't say to the Will Dan what would happen because she had have to research it more. Uh, she was able to give me the temporary and emergency one pretty easy and uh, well, not easy, but was able to answer it. And then Chief Tuttle and I were able to work out something for county fire on coverage on a temporary basis. Chief, did you speak? Um, I also did independent research with Will Dan, which confirms exactly what you are saying. Okay, great. Uh, uh, did you speak to anybody at LAFCO? Yes, we talked to Mike at LAFCO. He told me that um, until we made a decision, he couldn't make any forward progress from his part of it, but a temporary close happens often and uh, that it's happened you know, before in, in his jurisdiction area. And uh, if, if and when we decide tonight to close it, temporary, permanent, or whatever, I have to get with him first thing in the morning so he can uh, start process from his end. But right now he didn't make any um, any suggestions or anything at this point other than to get a hold of him and let him know what we've decided. Chief Tuttle, how soon could we um, uh, transfer that over to county um, if we decide to do a temporary? We could do it, we could do it immediately. The more time we have, the more lead time we have, the better, uh, just so we can get the contract drafted and get signatures and everybody's approval. Right. And uh, make sure that the dispatch centers are in the loop and we have a, a clean transfer of calls. Um, but other, other than that, we respond day to day in the Moronga Valley anyway to help you guys on mutual aid. So that's that part's the easy part. It's working out all the administrative parts that would take longer. Um, I, I think that there's probably a way that we could start services and then retro back that contract. Um, okay. Waiting for, for your approval and board approval, the county board approval. Um, okay. But yeah, the, the longer we can put it, I know you guys are in a, in a staffing crisis right now, um, but um, even a few days would be helpful from our end, but if, if that's not possible, we'll provide service immediately. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, do any of the board members have any uh, questions for either Mr. Yearsley or Mr. Tuttle? I have a couple. Uh, who do you speak to, Gary? I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Who did you speak with? Name and title, please. Who at which place? At Will Dan in the county. Uh, Will Dan, uh, our representatives, excuse me, our representative is Josephine. And when you call in, you just ask for her. And uh, she is our representative for everything. Her last name is Moses. And I spoke to Chris Fisher in that department as well, Will Dan. And I have the phone number if you need that. I would like it. I would like the number for saying. Would probably be a good idea for maybe to text it to you or something, Johnny. Okay, we can do that. I'll text you the phone number. It's, Thank you. It starts with area code 951. Okay. Um, I'll look for do any of the board, other board members have any questions before I ask? Oh, Christina Gorky, go ahead. Hey, thanks. Um, I'm just curious as far as um, this transfer assistance, a temporary thing, is this something that we can do for like a planned amount of time? Like if we're giving the guys that we have on staff now a break for a week and then get them back on staff for their regular shift and kind of share the time being until we get staffing up or would it be a complete 
when you know we're completely shut down and the guys aren't working at all until we're able to fill positions and get back and running 100% on our own. Well, I mean, I can answer what what I in talking with people to start and stop it every week to just have somebody cover would be a major issue because if we have to have a contract and stuff. It, I, my thought was if we're going to close it down to fix it, we should close it down, find the people that we need to so we can open it back up at full staff and have things ready to go. But it's a pretty big deal to, to start it, then stop it, then start it and stop it. I think it'd be better to stop it, get it all set up right and bring everybody back at one time full staffed. But I think what um, Director Gorky's question actually is, is what status would our current employees be put on? Would they be on temporary leave? Would they um, join the team, um, Chief Tuttle's team? What, what would our current staff, I think that might be the question she was asking. Well, then again, it'd be like a temporary layoff. Uh, I don't know that uh, Chief Tuttle will have to ask him could put him on his staff because it, it would have to be an employee of, you know, of the county. So uh, they would just be put on leave while we're doing this and then they could, you know, collect unemployment or whatever they could collect and then they would put be put back on when we opened it back up. Chief Tuttle, would you concur with that? Yeah, I concur with everything that Chief Yersley said. Um, the stopping and starting would be cumbersome, to say the least, and uh, due to the liability and uh, administrative factors, it wouldn't be possible to, to bring them on our team, even for a temporary basis. Um, uh, does Jake have a question for Mr. Yearsley or Mr. Tuttle? Uh, I guess I'm going to have a, probably a multiple amount of questions. Go ahead, Jake. Okay, so Chief Tuttle, you said that they will be responding from the Yucca Valley Fire Station? Yes, that is correct. Station 41? Yes. Is, is there any possibility that would be coming from Lander Station 42? Well, we can't roll that out. If 41 is busy on a call and we're on okay. the Valley, well, then the next closest engine would go. So it would be a, about a 20-minute ETA if 41 is unavailable with the call volume increase Yucca Valley has already been experiencing. Okay, um, another question. Um, what, what's, I mean, I, I concur with the director. Um, what's going to happen with the current employees to not only remove them, uh, and, and even if it's a temporary, um, I think that I, there needs to be some kind of compensation. These men and women that have been working for your department are now going to be possibly temporarily laid off with no pay. They may be able to seek unemployment, maybe. I mean, I just feel like for the people who have been working for what, two, three weeks straight, and then out of nowhere, we're just gonna say, hey guys, go home. County, county fire is gonna be uh, covering. You guys figure out your money issues during that time. Uh, I would, I'm very disappointed that that's an option you guys are really considering to do, especially when you, you thanked them for last two meetings for all their hard work and effort. And now that we're just going to say, all right, leave, we're not going to pay you for a little bit, a little bit until we get everything situated. To me, I think that's very poor. Um, and <sighs> responding from Yucca Valley to Morongo Valley, I think they're going to have a five minute jump, maybe, maybe not even that on MBA. I just don't see the benefit in closing your guys' fire station. You may talk about rebuilding your staff, but it needs to start with hiring people who've applied. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm kind of shocked that this was, this is something we turn to, even if it's temporarily. I mean, I have nothing wrong with County Fire as themselves, but the response time within itself, it's almost just, it's kind of not even right. I mean, and I'm just kind of shocked that, for the men and women who are working really hard right now, who've been on for weeks on end, are going to be told, hey, see you later. We're going to uh, replace you guys temporarily until we figure our things out. That's very, very, very upsetting. That's all. Thank you. Th thank you, Jake. 
Uh, Chris Chavez. Chris, do you have some questions? How do I, how do I do uh, it? Who's space bar, I think. Can you guys hear us? Oh, there we go. Yeah, we hear you, Chris. All right, go ahead. Well, Johnny, uh, here you go. It, it's me. Um, I just want to say again, uh, yes, me and Chavez have been working and I agree. We love this community and I do think it's highly disrespectful for you guys to even consider county when we have been working tirelessly to, to uh, keep this department open. And uh, there's, there's honestly no reason we have people. It's not a staffing issue. And since we're talking about closing, I'll be honest with you, it's a chief issue. No, one, we, no one's going to work here for him because he's we have so stuff. many people no that want that want to work here as soon as he leaves. I think it's a hazard. We're so it's it's not nothing. a staffing issue. I have texts. I can everything I'm telling you, I can prove we have so many people that want to work here. They love they love it here. It's a great community. We you know every everything that we you guys stand for, they want to work. Um, but we just we need to have a different chief. And I have letters. Um, here stating that and there's we have we have a qualified engineer I can bring on right now but he refuses to look at his app and he can tell you himself I'm not going to say who it is we can't hear that person oh Chris, sorry, can you hear can't hear that other person oh I'm oh he can't hear me though um no, I, we couldn't but I, I do have a qualified engineer I can bring right now but he refuses to look at his app so we have people to bring in he just don't want to I don't know what the deal he is. doesn't want to bring in because he's trying to claim staffing issues but there's no staffing issue because he wants to shut the station down. So we have down. people who will work. And again, uh, and then on scene, we have had plenty of Morongo Valley citizens who we love, who have been crying to us to not shut this place down. Do they like County, but they said they want a local fire department. And that they said that at one point, I don't, this is just what I have heard from other citizens is that the response time from County is just too long. And they do not want to wait 15 minutes, 20 minutes when we're six minutes down the street. And I, we've had a lot of people tell us that they do not, they want local control. They want Morongo Valley and they love us for all the good that we've done. I don't know if you guys heard, but we've had recently in the past week, we've had a couple of uh, auto versus peds. Now imagine if you had to wait 15, 20 minutes, we had a pediatric who was, who was hit. Do you really wanna wait 20 minutes for him to have help? Or do you, want, do you want a fire department to be on scene in six minutes? We had a lady who was hit. Do you want her to wait 20 minutes? So okay, it, well, we we hear what you're saying, guys. I mean, we've you've said this at past meetings, and we understand what you're saying. And okay, the board has one more thing. What one more disrespect thing. Okay. do you really understand? But we have uh, we also uh, you actually you guys from what we were told from our union, we are a union member, and you guys cannot just close us down because that's called union busting. And that you guys have to ha actually have to work with us. And because you can't just, because we're, since we're union members, and if you close the station down, we're out of a job. Yeah, I got a meeting and, with the rep tomorrow. And so yeah, so the rep actually just called us today because he said that's highly illegal. Okay, well, we'll consider all those things. Thank you so much for uh, talking to us tonight. We appreciate your input. I really Thank do you. hope you consider Thank it you. instead of sweeping it under the rug, too. Uh, is there anybody else that um, would like to say something? I, I have a letter here from Sean Miller that I just got yesterday and I didn't have time to scan it in and send it to the rest of the board members. But I see that Sean is here. Perhaps I will, I will scan this in and, and email it to everybody tomorrow. But Sean, would you like to have a comment at this time? Sean Miller? How you doing? Hi, Sean. Um, so just the base brief summary of that letter I sent to you guys, just stating that I'm one of those individuals that's willing to help out and work. Like I'm, I'm fully qualified. I've worked for Morongo Valley Fire in the past. And in that letter is also stating why I won't currently work for the department. So I'll let you guys go ahead and read that. Um, so it's like I said, I'm, I'm willing and able, but until you know, honestly, until the chief steps down from his current position, I don't feel comfortable working for the department. Thank you, Sean. Um, is there anybody else that would like to speak uh, at this point? Uh, 
Somebody's, uh, uh, Jake, I'm going to let somebody else speak. Uh, Matthew, compost. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I am very disappointed that this is even under consideration. We have a fire department that is busting their butt, saving lives here in our valley. They respond quickly. And the idea that our board of directors is even entertaining the idea of closing our fire department down. They keep saying that it's temporary, but um, you know, I, I can't help but feel that you guys want to do it permanently. And it's very distressing. Um, don't do this. You're putting your community at risk. Uh, nothing against county fire, um, Officer Tuttle and, and uh, the fire department from the county offer tremendous help. They're always here when we need them. But this is our fire department. This is our community. And they respond to taking care of our people. And the idea that you're even entertaining a close down is absolutely appalling. I can't believe that you would even consider jeopardizing the lives of this community, the property of this community, uh, when you've got people that are willing to take over and step in. You know, we've had general managers and fire chiefs before, and we will have general managers and fire chiefs afterwards. And there's absolutely no reason to even consider shutting us down. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Buddy Stogner. Hi. Hi, buddy. So, okay, I, um, I, I say, I think that's a very bad idea. We need our, our community. We need our little fire department. We, we cannot risk waiting for Yucca Valley to get down here. The, the traffic that just, it's insane. So, I mean, I don't know what needs to happen, but whatever needs to happen, we need to keep our local fire department up and rolling. That's about all I have to say. Just come on, guys. Figure this out. Community. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Um, I'm going to call Meg Foley because she hasn't s spoken before. Meg? Yeah, I want to agree with everything that uh, Matthew Campos said and thank the guys who have been on duty. And I'm also a little disappointed. It seems like we're talking about one thing, just closure, whether it be uh, temporary or permanent. Um, you know, citizens met on Sunday and presented some ideas that could be uh, put into, into motion pretty quickly. And I hope uh, no matter what route we wind up taking that um, the, the guys that are currently on staff are kept on staff because they can certainly be occupied helping rebuild the program even if they're not going on calls if that's too onerous to do with the uh, county but I hope you consider and discuss some of the options that were presented this weekend because I agree with we really need to maintain local control like we have for 60 years thank you um, can I cut in, Gail? Yes, of course, Lori. I would like to see, hear, and ruminate on any and all options that came up at that meeting. I don't believe we've been given anything in writing. No, Lori, you have not. I will be making a presentation as soon as all the public comments is done. I'm sorry, say it again? Um, I will be making a presentation on what we did Sunday and what was brought to the committee on Sunday. When, okay. all the public comment has, when all the public comment has been completed. Yeah, as, okay, as long as we get the whole thing. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, I'd like Brian. to say something. Who is this? This is Robert. Robert, I'm going to call on people who have their hands up. And uh, oh. Brian Duke, uh, you've had your hand up for a while. Hi everyone, how you doing tonight? My name's Brian. I've been a resident of Morongo Valley for the last year and a half and I absolutely love it here. Um, 
Gail, has there been an investigation as to why the partner morale or the employee morale is down at the fire station? Um, would be my first question. Uh, I think um, from what we've heard that um, part of the problem is that we do not have enough staff. And so the two people that are left are having to work tremendous hours and it's not, it's not, it puts the board and the community into a very bad liability issue of working people more than they need to be worked. Mm -hmm. And we have, I think you can uh, talk to Mr. Yearsley, there have not been any qualified people who have put in applications to work, who want to work on shifts. Um, some people have said they would come in, you know, once in a while when you needed somebody. Well, we can't run a station like that. We have to have three shifts of a paramedic, an engineer, and a reserve. Right. And we've so, had well, feelers out for, we've had feelers out for over a year and we just cannot find any qualified people. And who, who's the responsible party to hire and train? The chief. Okay. Chief Earsley. The chief is not able to do his job, correct? I do not believe that's true. I think he has done more than anybody could have ever expected okay. of one human being. Gail, what's your position on the board? I am the president of the board. Okay, I find it rather interesting that you have a very strong personal opinion as the president of a board for someone who is in question of their leadership and ability to run a department, hire, train, and staff. So it sounds to me like there's some bias going on here. You're supporting him because of how you personally feel. Unfortunately- No, that's not true. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing and what I'm okay. listening to, okay? Okay. What I see and hear in this meeting is the fact that we have employees who are upset. Now, if they haven't filed a formal grievance, then that's what I would recommend they do with whoever they need to do it. The chief has to be held accountable to somebody, correct? That's correct. Is that you? It's and the, the board? whole board. Okay. It's the has, five people on the board. Has the board tried to uh, mediate the troubles at the fire station? All personnel issues are have to be held in closed session. We have had closed sessions and we have discussed things, but there has been no real proof of anything. And I think you can hear it from other people in the fire service who have great respect for Chief Yearsley, who can't believe what a great job he's done here for um, trying to keep everything together and for not having enough qualified people in their, their papers so I that hear, he can I hear hire you, them. Gail. I hear you. You, 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 I hear you loud and clear. You support the chief. So let me ask the chief, Chief Yearsley, do you think it might be time for you to step down or aside and allow someone else with a different leadership come in and groom a new team to support the community? Well, I've already put in my retirement. So um, now we're, we're trying to decide what to do to make it so we can get some people in and we still have no application. There's no applications, but we have one one guest on here tonight that said he's willing to come should you retire, correct? He put in that he could come and help us, but he can't help us with a rotating shift. So therefore, you know, that won't really help us for somebody just to come in spot a time. We really need to staff with our, our three shift so everybody can have their days off that they need. And he can only come in and work because he's working full time somewhere else. He can't be on a rotating shift. Understood. Okay. Well, I don't think I have anything more else to say. I think I've made my point. I think that Chief Yearsley has done a great job at doing his leadership up until this point, and it might be time for him to retire. And I think the board strongly needs to look into that. 
and keep this fire department going, whether it be staffed at two, two and a half, or three or four. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Uh, who's, I, I see one name, it's iPad. Who is that? That wants to speak. This is Robert. Robert, Hello? go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, um, one thing that everybody seems to um, overlook is the station is the closest um, point to the grade where so many accidents happen. And I've seen so many of them. You imagine adding five to 10 minutes to the response time, you know, when there is an accident on the grade, it just doesn't, doesn't work. The, the station has to be there in order to address that, that one particular problem you know no no other station can respond as quickly as they can thank you very much robert uh who is it that just says ipad probably me chuck osborne oh well chuck go ahead i from what i have gathered and what i'm hearing the fire department, there are personnel that were willing to be on this fire department, but the management is wrong. And, and any time that a manager sues the company more than once, it's, I just don't understand how they could be still part of that team. So with everything that I've heard tonight, I, we need to keep the fire department. We cannot take the chance of it going dormant for 30 days, 90 days, or whatever, we need to release the chief, bring in a, a temporary chief, and hire up the staff right now. That's all. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, anybody else? Jake, you've already, do you have something new to add, Jake? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I've, I've been reading the, uh, not only the comments and also chiming in every once in a great while, but I have also heard out the firefighters that are currently on duty uh, about multiple applicants that have applied, okay? I just want to let everyone know that there was no investigation after the last meeting, if you did not attend, on the fire chief because he threw in his retirement and that there decided to be no investigation because the chief is going to retire, Okay. He retires December 31st, okay? Why, I, I just don't see, even if someone's gonna retire- The board has not decided whether we're doing it or not yet. Okay, thank you very much. But we have, more, I mean, just listen to the firefighters at this point. They are telling you they have people who applied or who want to apply. I, I just don't see why we're not hearing them out and maybe, Maybe having the board members go on a little private or have a closed meeting with the on-duty firefighters and get, get a really good understanding on what's going on. Not have them go to a Sunday committee out in the public so that way everything that is said is kept behind closed door, protect you of any lawsuits, so no employee violations. But I just don't know why that hasn't been brought up. Hear out your employees. Not only that, these are union members. OK, they can if, if we if the board makes a decision, the union can come after you guys and after the Morongo Valley. I don't know if that's really something they want to do, but just taking them out and saying, see you later. We're, we're going to go part time or a temporary contract with county. That's not fair. There has to be something done. And considering a contract with county, I'm, again, nothing against county, but they're not going to be covering out of 461. They're going to be covering from 41 and 41 I know gets calls like no other. So sometimes you may get a response from 42, which is up in Landers. Also, Chief uh, Tuttle, what would be your first alarm response for Morongo Valley? What units would that include in their identifiers? Yeah, so a first alarm would include basically the same units that are on the current alarm except we have a, a county fire unit instead of the Moronga Valley unit. So, so you would still, still keep, yeah, sorry, still, still the same mutual aid agreements that 
the current Moronga Valley has. So you'd still have 36 respond from Desert Hot Springs? You wouldn't just yeah. have all county yeah. fire? No, okay. no, because no. Okay. So because normally you guys do get called out on from time to time on their first alarm, who would replace Medic Engine 41 since that will be already auto-aided out? Would that be 36, 42, 44? It depends, it depends on who's the closest. We, we go on closest resource. Okay, so yeah. again, nothing against County Fire Chief. I thank you for what you guys do up here in the Morongo Basin. Um, I do have some issues, but that's nor here or there right now. However, taking out and having a, another unit respond from either Joshua Tree, Landers, or even 29 Palms out to Morongo Valley is still another delayed response. We can't close station 461. Hear out your firefighters. Hear them out. Consider options. Maybe listen to the firefighters and what options they may want to suggest instead of just going solely off the person that was that if you guys are still considering on opening an investigation on. Thank you very much. I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you. Uh, are there any more questions or comments? Gail, can you hear me? Yeah. This is Janet is Osborne. Oh, hi. Hi. Flat out embarrassing, man. Flat out embarrassing. This didn't need to happen. This was preventable. This needs to be rectified. Closing the station is unacceptable on all levels. Just because it's hard doesn't mean you throw in the towel, even on a temporary basis. I suggest the chief steps down immediately and you guys get an interim general manager so that there's accountability. The, the, I, I understand the experiment of combining the positions. I understand the financial constraints. I do. I just think that the cost, which is what we're facing right now is way too high. You need to get an emergency interim general manager. I've seen you do it in a day before. You can do this. Get an interim general manager. Get the fire department staffed. Work it out. But do not close this fire department, Gail. And I know there's five of you, but I also know That's the score right. on that too. Do not. Majority of the board, Gail, Christina, and Klimowitz. That seems to be the only majority on the board that, you know, decides everything. Stop what you're doing. Decide better. Think of the community. My husband, who served this community for decades, had a massive heart attack. If he had to have waited for that delayed response time, he'd be dead. There was minutes. That's all he had when he got to the emergency room because this fire department got here in minutes and handled it and got him down there. Think about it. Who do you love? that would only have minutes and by your decision, not make it. Make a better decision. Do not close this fire department. Let people retire now. I don't care how you think of them or if they did a good job or a bad job. I don't care. That is not the problem right now. The problem is staffing. If no one wants to work for this guy, let them retire now. You've already said, people have already said, hey man, we're ready to come in, we're ready to do it. And, and you know, you probably have a lot more once it starts. So I suggest you stop what you're doing in the thought of closing this fire department. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Uh, is there, are there any other uh, comments from the public? Who's, would the person that says iPad, please give us their name so we know who we're talking to? I you think that person already up. spoke, ma'am. Oh, okay. Um, so if there are no other comments, uh, Johnny, do you want to give your report from the uh, park meeting? Yes, I do. Oh. Uh, Myself and, myself and Director Gorky held out 
start our ad hoc committee this Sunday, last Sunday, excuse me. And we had seven citizens come to the meeting and voice their opinion and give us ideas. Johnny, I'm sorry, but I'm having a hard time understanding you. Can you speak a little more slowly? I'm sorry, Lori. Thank you. Yeah. Last Sunday, we had an ad hoc committee meeting in the NPR in Covington Park. Besides myself and Director Gorky, there were seven other citizens that came to the meeting to give us ideas and suggestions on how to keep the fire department running. They suggested we talk to a former fire chief. I received his phone number today. I have not had a chance to get in touch with him yet. In fact, I've been rather busy. Also, suggestion was brought up that is it possible that we have a deputy chief and Chief Brakeville, if he was willing to come in on an interim basis and run the fire department. Also, it was brought up that we have an administrative assistant who's been working extremely hard and basically running the district for the last year and a half to two years. If they would be willing to step up and be interim fire chief, interim general manager, allowing Gerald Yearly to retire immediately and let them run the fire department. It would seem to re relieve the issue of people saying they don't want to work for Mr. Yearsley. Mm -hmm. With that suggestion being made, I did contact Chief Brakeville before tonight's meeting so I could ask him if he was willing to do that. And he said, yes, he is willing to step in on an interim basis and be the fire chief. I contacted him that way I would have information to bring back to the board. Director Gorky, she was contacted Ms. Chavez. I'll let her speak on that. Hey, so um, I did contact Brittany and asked um, if it would be something she would willing be willing to do to help us out um, on an interim basis. Um, she said it's it's something that she would be willing to step into the position for so that we can um, proceed with you know moving forward, finding people to fill positions keep everyone on staff and avoid having to do even a temporary shutdown. Um, though I do appreciate getting information on what it would look like if we did have to um, rely on the county for support for less than 90 days. If for some reason, once um, Brittany and, and Rakeville come in to take over temporarily um, until we're able to develop a committee to find a general manager to hire in a permanent position um, that we, we know what the next step would be if we had to get to that point, um, which I would be hopeful that having Brittany in place as general manager for the time being, we'd be able to get some more staff um, in order and then, you know, work on uh, finding a permanent general manager. I would think Lori. With Lara, oh. with, with, I would think after hearing what the community has been saying and also been reading their comments. Um, the community is telling us not to shut down. And in the end, that's what we work for. So we really need to consider their comments, their concerns. And I do believe we have a viable solution to get things started. Also, um, the comment that was um, made about Mr. Miller saying that because he couldn't come to us as full time, if he can give us shifts as a paramedic to relieve the people who are on duty right now, why wouldn't we use him? We know he's a competent paramedic. We know he's worked here before. We know he works for NBA right now. So he's a certified paramedic, he's qualified. We have people willing to come here to help Morongo Valley not shut down. Their only request, the only problem seems to be at this point is no one wants to work for Gerald Yearsley. <laughs> it is time that we as the board listen to what we're being told by our constituents, by our firefighters and everybody who wants to help us and move forward and do, us, do the right thing. That was why uh, we Lori, had a meeting last Sunday and we're gonna have a meeting this Sunday also at 1 p.m. Okay, thank you, Johnny. Uh, Lori, Lori, go ahead. Um, yeah, um, real quick, Johnny, if I was to come to the meeting, um, that would be okay too, right? I mean, if there's more than one board member. No, no, Lori, you can't because we can't 
um, with myself and Inspector Gorky being there. That's two. Right. That's why yeah, I didn't was, come Sunday because I figured you guys uh, were already on the committee. Yeah, if you come, that's three. That can that constitutes a serial meeting, and we exactly. cannot do that. That'd okay, I'm just verifying that so I can let the community know that I wanted to be there, but I yes, I need to know very in detail what that was all about. Um, that's not really what I had my hand up for, though. Oh, go I'm, ahead, Lori. I am. I'm. I'm not a stupid person, but I'm very confused. Because the whole time I've been on this board, I was under the impression that the hiring and interviews was done by the general manager. Can the board actually interview and hire people? Because that's what the, everybody's saying we should do. By the way, a thank you to all those community members who are not using bad language and other nasty comments um in the chat i appreciate the information without the nastiness but i want to know if in fact we have one one person saying there's nobody interview there's nobody to hire and the other person saying we have a ton of people to hire who gets to do the interviewing and the hiring because if it's just the general manager then we are up a creek can somebody okay, answer that? No, Can somebody the answer the question? No, wait, wait, wait. No, no, stop, John, stop. The question is, do we have the authority as a board to actually do that? I'm answering that question. And how do, and how do you know, where is that going to, where is that actually written in the law, in the code, whatever, so you can prove to me that what you say is true? Okay, I will answer that question for you. The board hires the general manager. If there's no general manager in place, the board can hire a general manager and a fire chief. The fire chief hires the firefighters, not the general manager. So if we bring in Chief Brakeville as the interim fire chief. He is allowed to hire firefighters. If we bring in Brittany as an interim general manager, she would be the one Chief Brakeville would report to. The board only hires the general manager. I'm sorry, the general manager would hire who? The fire chief. Okay. So we would we could place Chief Brickville and Brittany in charge, and they could do the hiring. I I guess the reason I'm asking this question is I feel like my hands are tied, my feet are tied, I'm gagged, I'm blindfolded, because we can have all the meetings we want. But the people that have to take the action are not us. And that's, it's really irritating. Well, we have to make the rules. Yeah, and okay. So our responsibility to make the rules. If we, if we have, I want to get down to the bottom of this. Why some, one person says there's nobody to hire and somebody else says there's lots of people to hire. I want to see the people. Sorry. Um, I, I'm Lori, sorry. there's the iPad person keeps yes. writing that he's not being called, whoever it is. Who okay, are you? What is your name? iPad. You have your hand up. He does, his audio's off. He has to be. You have um, to unmute yourself. The, he has to unmute himself. Unmute yourself, Mr. iPad. Well, he's not responding. So. Um, Steve Kennedy, our attorney, is with us uh, this evening. Do you want to weigh in on any of this so far, Steve? Uh, sure, I'd be glad to. Um, Thank you. First of all, I, I, I think uh, all of the, uh, the, the comments that the board has received certainly has been um, compelling and uh, um, and fruitful, and I think that uh, important to the decision making that the that the board has. Uh, in response to um, uh, Director Clemens' uh, question regarding uh, employment, I think uh, Director Tolbert answered that um, correctly. Uh, the the district is a community services district under Government Code Section six one zero five zero. A the board appoints the general manager. 
And then at that point in time under 61051, B, the general manager is responsible for uh, the appointment, supervision, discipline, and dismissal of the district's employees, consistent with whatever policy the board has adopted as far as its regulation system. So that hierarchy is one that is statutory, and uh, uh, and I think that was accurately reflected um, in the uh, in the response that Director Tolbert had given. Um, the uh, the comment from Chief Tuttle about the uh, about uh, the agreement that the district would uh, that the board would need to consider uh, with the county um, that hasn't been uh, prepared or at least I haven't received that so I can't comment on that document uh, without having seen it and and perhaps um, this could be something that the board would want to. Uh, recommendation was was made that maybe the board wait a few days if the board if possible to make a final decision on this uh, in order to review that agreement and um, so that would be something that the board may want to consider uh, it, as part of your decision making is whether or not that's something you want to take a look at and see what the responsibilities would be um, contractually that you would have the county uh, you know before making a decision uh, but that I'll be glad to try and answer any questions that the board or, or the, any member of the public may have. Well, I have a few, uh, you know, I don't have any particular questions for you, Steve, but I have a few comments of my own. When people are saying they're representing the people of Morongo Valley, I see maybe 12 or 15 people and the meeting that was held in the park, I think Mr. Tolbert said there were seven besides himself and um, Christina Gorky. Uh, our population is over 3,500 people. So it seems to me that we are hearing from people that somehow are I don't think they understand the full weight of what we are talking about. Um, we have a fiduciary and a, a, a legal responsibility to the district to do sometimes a very difficult, make a very difficult decision. And it might not seem like the right decision for everyone, but we, the board, are responsible for the district and if we are having people um, working over the allotted time that people are supposed to be working without days off that puts the board in legal jeopardy because we are doing something that really is not right for our employees i understand how our two employees feel um, I, I know that some of the people in the district have asked for unqualified people to be given jobs um, that, that would put the board and the fire chief and the whole district in jeopardy. If he doesn't want people because he doesn't want to happen. And it came out talking about if you say that you've had, um, right off, so right off you have right had here. lots of people who, would you mute everybody, Gail, please? Gail, Jim? You're, yeah, you're cutting out. Okay. I, I maybe have a, a um, it says my, I might have to go on my phone. Um, okay. Uh, well, I hope I hope I can finish up right here. Um, I know you, all of you that have been speaking are are very um, passionate about how you feel, and and I do understand that. But as a board member, I have to look at the whole picture, and I have to look at the legal issues, and I have to look at what the board could have to take responsibility for if we hired the wrong people 
or unqualified people, or if we did things that that were not in the best interests of Morongo Valley. And I think a lot of people are missing the point that just because the fire station is here does not mean they're going to get the best service if we don't have enough employees. And we're putting our employees at risk, we're putting the community at risk, and we're putting the board at risk. And personally, I have to make my decision weighing all those risks. And that's that's all I have to say. I'm gonna see if I can get on with my phone. Go, anybody else? If I get cut yes. out, Christina, would you take over? Yes. yes. We have um, a concern yes. in the yes. chat yes. that yes. iPad yes. is trying to speak. Yes. And he does not understand how to unmute himself. He thinks we're railroading him by keeping him muted, but we're not. We really want to hear what you have to say. So can we help walk you through how to unmute yourself? Hello. Can you hear me, Christina? Uh-huh. This is Janet Osborne again. I, I understand what Gail is saying, but the truth is, is that you've had two former board directors comment on how to fix this. You had other people like me, Betty, Meg, you name it, who have been heavily active in this community and also know how everything works. We know the risks. Those risks exist even when your fire department is full and you're hiring. That's why you hire and you have it go through a regiment to make sure that qualified people are hired. You know, I don't understand, Christina, honey, I, I don't understand how your opinion has changed from the, we can do it, we'll find a way to throwing, throwing it, you know, here. I don't understand that at all. I don't understand why, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how many people show up. If you show up and you speak up, you get heard. You get counted. So the other thousands of people who don't show up, too bad on them. The ones who do show up need to be heard, need to be represented. They don't need to be represented. So we all that, uh, you know, we don't count the wrong with you. It's just a little you speak, you're counted. And it should be that way. I know a few people who have been, who do. We lost her. Can you pause that for a minute? We lost her. Um, okay, so we appreciate her comments. I think Gail's going to be coming back on at some point. Oh, I see her there. Okay, so we're trying to, um, Chief Breakbill, we are trying to unmute if you could assist us. <laughs> in unmuting iPad. That's what I'm saying. If you show up, please speak up, you should count. You should be discounted. Janet, you're, you have a really bad connection and we can't hear you, unfortunately. It's, it's going in and out. But is iPad still there and wants to talk? That's me. Chief Brinkville, have you been able to unmute him or her? I've unmuted that person. Okay, so where is iPad now? iPad's not on here anymore now. Okay. Yeah, they are. Oh, wait. Is iPad now concerned citizen? No, I'm no he still has iPad. Okay, well, we can't find iPad right now because we would really like to talk to iPad. I, I have iPad right now. I see him. Okay. He if doesn't have I, his hand raised anymore. Okay, could iPad please make his, his or her comments? Uh, iPad's still muted right this second. I see. I can see it. Um, there's a button on the bottom left-hand side of your screen, iPad where you can unmute yourself. It looks like a microphone and you just have to click on it. And we'll be able to see when you unclick it because your microphone won't, won't be crossed off anymore. So let's go ahead and 
let you have a chance to unclick. It's on the bottom left-hand part of your screen if you're on a computer. If you um, can chat, oh, he he's said saying it's, not, it's working. not working. Okay, oh yes, it is. oh, now that's Jake at the top, okay. Um, sorry, I was just making sure you read okay, the Okay, so uh, iPad, he's saying he's sorry, it's not working for him to unmute himself for some reason. I don't know if he's on a phone or computer or what. So I guess uh, we have not heard from Shauna Johnson yet. Um, Shauna, you have your hand raised and you're unmuted. Hi, um, I just have a couple quick um, concerns. And of course the first one is the checks and balances with Chief Yearsley. When you're the chief and running the department, there are no checks and balances. And that is a huge concern of mine. Um, also was brought up uh, the attendance at the meetings um, you know, we elect people uh, in, these, in these positions to represent our community. And that's why we, a lot of times, don't show up. Christina, I know you personally, Laurie, Johnny, I've, I have dealt with all of you on a personal basis and I trust your, um, I trust that you are doing what is best for the community. However, we have got to have somebody in charge of the fire department who is responsible, who is invested in this community and cares about it. And Without paramedics, without firefighters, we are um, we are vulnerable here. Uh, we live between between two grades. That if, if something happens, we need to trust that our community and our people that we entrust to help us will be there for us. And I'm just asking that uh, if the issue is that the chief needs to step down so we can get someone in a position to run the department the way it should be run with competent staff, then I just believe that Mr. Mr. Chief Yardley needs to man up and walk away. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Shauna, for your comment. And thank you for your business in town. We appreciate your business. The children and the families love your business. Thank you so much thank for what you. you're doing. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, I want to answer a, a question that's been in club ch uh, the chat. And also Shauna brought it up right now, if you guys will allow me to answer that. Um, one of the things is, is that Chief Yearsley has been here for nearly four years. And for four years, it has worked and it has saved our community money. We are operating on a very small budget. And I wanna answer the question about whether it's legal to have combined the general manager and fire chief into one position. Um, when we were confronted with our limited budget, I did my own research with the state district legal council, and it is a footnote in the job description um, about this combination. The legal council of the state district confirmed that this is a legal way of doing business and the, he even commented, the attorney, that it was a very fiscally responsible way to have a district that has limited budget be able to, to function. So we can take that off the plate. It is not something that was illegal or anything like that. And the interesting thing is it has worked for four years, but I do hear the frustration of the community and it does sound like there's some, something amiss um, 
that we need to to look into. And unfortunately, um, we have a very limited time time to do that. We do um, we appreciate all your comments that you're making. This is a small community. We work together. We have had your kids in school with us. I mean, we we care about this treasure community just as much as all of you do. So I wanted to answer that question about the combination and why it was done. And yes, it was legal according to the state. So just want to want to make sure you guys hear that. Gail, do you want me to continue facilitating while you're? Microphone? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to call on concerned citizen next who has their hand raised. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, quick, several notes and I'll make it quick and brief. I am okay. a long term I am a long term fire service professional. I have way more years on the job than Mr. Yearsley. I have professional experience, not volunteer like what only only as volunteer. I want you guys to understand the stepping stone saying that's been going on in Morongo Valley for the last 10, 15 years. It's a failed model. The Stepping Stone Fire Department does not work. It's fast food fire department. It's like having your kids in school and have a new teacher for the kids every two to three months. The volume and quality goes down. The idea of a Stepping Stone Fire Department is a failed model and it's not working in the city of Placentia and it's not working at Cali Mesa. And it's, it's what's hurting you guys. The next thing I want to bring up is once you guys shut down your fire department, no one has said this yet, your homeowner's insurance rates will go up. Your ISO rates will go up. You need to think about that because you're going to be paying money out of pocket whether you like it or not. I'd rather be paying out of pocket and have an engine show up in two, three minutes instead of, instead of higher insurance rates. It will happen. It, it will, I promise. Next, this is the second fire chief that's grossly incompetent and inexperienced. The last two fire chiefs we had we're volunteer only fire chiefs. They have no EMT experience, they're not certified EMTs, no paramedic experience, no strike team leader experience, no command experience. This is the person that's ruining your department. If you, if you had a company and you had a CEO running any business and you had no experience running that business, it would fail. And it's happening right now. This is the third time in the last five years this department has collapsed internally, 2016, 2018, and now. It, it, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. It's not, the chief is the problem. It's not the personnel. And you're gonna have to open the wallets and start paying people better wages. And right now, In-N-Out Burger pays better wages than the Morongo Valley Fire Department. And you keep losing people, it's hurting you. It's actually cheaper to keep her and bring, bring in people and pay them a little bit better wages. The fire chief has turned away good applicants. I can say that because I'm one of them. He has lied to me over the phone. He's been confrontational, he's falsely accused me, and he's turned down my application, probably because I have more time on the job than he does. And it's not the last time you guys are gonna hear from me either. I'm telling you, this chief is horrible and we do not wanna work for him. People do not wanna work for this guy and have their careers ruined by him. And then our last thing is, once you lose this paramedic service, it is so hard to get back. If you guys, this is a golden opportunity, look around all of San Bernardino County, now, there's not paramedic service everywhere. Once you lose that valuable tool, that life-saving ALS, advanced life support item, it's hard to get back. And I'm telling you, as a over 30 years in the medical service, when you call 911, seconds seem like minutes. And you guys are going to lose a service. And, and, and one last thing, the California Fire Service, we talk. We are a community of people that talk. Right now, the Morongo mm. Valley Department and the CSD does not have a good reputation. If you guys keep advertising over and over and trying to fix this and put a bandaid on the cancer, you're not going to work. We talk. Everyone knows to avoid this fire department, and people are waiting for this years late to leave. That you're not fooling the fire service community. The colleges talk. Us instructors, we talk. We tell people where to go, where not to go, who to avoid. Start listening to your firefighters. We are the experts not elected volunteer board members, no offense, but just like a hospital, would you listen to the doctors around the hospital or the janitors? I would listen to the specialists, the people who are educated and they know what's going on. And this is not the last time you're gonna hear from me. And some of the firefighters know who I am because I've been in touch with them. And 
I'm telling you, and one last thing, if you remove this fire department, you take some drastic measures, consider this, you could be sued individually. I'm not threatening you, but I'm telling you, you could be sued for the uh, management mistakes you've made to shut down this department. If someone calls for 911 at 2.30 in the morning because they have difficulty breathing or they need a tube put in or they need help, and you made this decision to shut down the service, which could have existed, you could be liable. Anybody could sue anybody at any time. And this meeting is public notice and anyone could get this video and use it against you in the lawsuit. I am not joking. You could be sued individually. That's not a threat. That's me as a friend passing along. The guys who know who I am, and I'm telling you guys, y'all would start listening to the professionals, get rid of Yearsley because he's a, he's a cancer in the organization. Thank you. Okay, so concerned what? citizen, normally um, we introduce ourselves or we say what community we're from. Are you willing to say who you are and where you're from? No, I'm not because uh, the retaliation that will come against me, I don't want it. You guys, and I know you will take retaliation against anybody who speaks up and that's why you've been sued so many times. I'm not oh. dumb. So you guys will retaliate oh, against anyone that says anything and <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Look, at, look, you guys lost the firefighters in 2018. Okay, thank back. you for your input then. Thank you very much. Okay. If, if you're not uh, able to introduce yourself, that's okay. Um, I think we have another comment from Jake. Can, can yes, I just- Wait, yes, Lori, um, Director, uh, Director, Director Klumwitz has I a question want first. I point out to everyone at this point that we are not having this meeting to close the fire department. That is not what it says. This meeting is to address staffing issues. So the fact that everybody's saying these things about how we are here to close the fire department is not true. Thank you. Okay. We're not hiring people though, ma'am. Are you hiring okay. people? Nobody not... has come to my door and said, hey, hire this guy. And we will you know what? we will I... consider that. This tonight's the first time I even knew that there were other people that were available. I've applied for the department. I don't hear back from the department. People have applied there because they're shut down by Yearsley. Why don't you Okay? Open... You're Talk telling to... me that tonight. I'm saying. This is a discussion many, about staffing how many emails, issues. How many emails we don't want to close down the fire department. None of That's us do. Mr. Brakeville, would you please mute the concerned citizen? Because he's he gave us his comments. He's afraid to give us his name. He's threatening the board that we're going to get sued and won't even can't even stick up and say what his name is. And I find that despicable. Um, we're here trying to make good decisions for the community. And some of you may agree with us and some of you may not. I have to say one thing that was said by, I'm not sure who it was, about how we need to pay our firefighters more money. In 2016, a group of people spent months working to bring a, a, uh, a tax to the community of Morongo Valley. And we tried every different way. We talked about how the county would cost more in the long run. And we gave all the statistics and everything. And a rounding 60% of the people said, no, they don't wanna pay more taxes. So it's not just the board who is, is making it so that we can't have a better fire department. It's the people of Morongo Valley who do not want to pay more for the service. So don't start blaming the board for things that the community will not step up and fund. I was there during that time and the community, community was uh, not properly informed. They were told Jock Johnson wanted a pay raise and a new vehicle. They were misinformed on okay, that. Okay, look, you know, we've, we've heard enough from you right now. Uh, please, please I'm, mute I'm, him, I'm, will you, Jim? I'm, I'm, threatening anybody. No, I just, yeah, you're not going to cut off a citizen. Yeah, but you know, I'm not going to deal with that tonight. Girl. We just have to have, um, we need to have, okay, look, uh, no, uh, um, you know what, you guys did this in 2018 to your firefighters. It was a free <sighs> meeting and you violated their freedom of speech, their first amendment right. No. And you, and you got sued for it. I we just to want to have an organized input. That's all we want. We don't okay. want everyone I'm starting not, to free okay, not, fall. I'm not threatening okay. anybody, but I'm, I'm watching your fire, but you've not raised your fees in uh, 19 years. You've not kept pace and tempo with the uh, timeline. 
Right. And it's you not like 2016 that but we, community... we actually we have, have tried to um, do that. We we cannot raise the rates. The community has to vote on its tax. We as a board cannot tell the community that they have to pay more. They have to vote on it. I mean, and we I did our that. best to but try to bring them all. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish, please. We tried our best. And I've been saying it almost at every meeting. We need more money. Our problem is we are not paying our firefighters enough money. And the community has not come together and said, we are willing to pay more money to our firefighters. Oh, but I'll tell you where your mistake, can I please tell your mistake is? You're not informing the community. Instead, this month you did a survey on your website. If you survey people and say, are you willing to pay more money? They're gonna say, no, you have to inform them. We are in a financial crisis at the moment. You've not, you've not done a press release. You've not laid it out. You've not told the people we're in a financial crisis and we're at skeleton staffing. You've not informed the public whatsoever. You do yes, we have. Public. Back in no. 2016, no. You guys we did a humongous um, campaign to okay. educate the community. Everything gets, well, okay, not everybody, please, please just mute everybody. Uh, guys, we can't. Inform the public just, now. They don't even know. Jim, no. mute him. You're not going to mute everybody. Please, please mute him. We've we just heard need to take everything that he said, time. Johnny. We don't need to hear it over and over again. We've heard what he said. Everybody gets three minutes, except for the board members who get more time to discuss things. We get we it. To take people, everybody you one at a time. Want to cut people off. Let them speak. You have a habit of wanting to cut people off. Johnny. This is Johnny. The Johnny. The king of cutting people off. Yeah, Lord, you do it too. Let him speak, Gary. Let Johnny, we have let everybody have their three minutes and more. And it's not getting us anywhere right now. We all, what we've heard from all these people, and unfortunately, the people who have really liked Mr. Yearsley or who have been served by Mr. One Yearsley. One person. Let me finish, please. <clears throat> We're just going around and around in circles. And we can just be here all night, you know, hearing all the same stuff. So Mr. Yearsley is retiring. He's going to be gone. You don't have to keep saying that. He's not going to be here anymore. So what we have to decide tonight, are we going to let the two <sighs> firefighters who have been working for way more days in a row than they should be, are we willing to take that liability as a oh, reward? Or would you please let me finish? We as a board going to take the responsibility for these two firefighters who have been working more hours than they should have been, or are we going to decide to close temporarily for 30 or 60 or 90 days and try to rebuild the fire department with a new fire chief? And if we need a general manager or whatever we need and have the county come in and help us until we can bring this together and bring more people into the district. Mr. Yearsley will not be hiring anybody. So all of you firefighters that are upset, you don't have to worry about that anymore because Mr. Yearsley is retiring and there we, will be somebody else there. So we think come back, he, he's gonna try to come back we, in. No, we don't need to hear that. He's not gonna come back, he's going to retire. He's going to move on to something else. So it's the board's decision now to decide, are we going to ask the county to, to help us for a few months till we can reorganize, get a new fire chief, get a general manager if that's what we want, or do whatever it is that we need to do, get more people hired, or are we just gonna go on with these two people working them 17, 20 days with no break? So oh, that's what the board has to decide. Yeah, you're talking about that, I got questions for you. I have a question for you, Gail. You made a comment earlier saying that only people <laughs> who apply for the positions are unqualified. How do you know they're unqualified? If they weren't hired, they were probably not qualified because 
Mr. Yearsley, I know what the qualifications are for the different jobs. I don't have it right on the, the top of my head, but I know what so you have to have certain certs and you have to have certain experience and you have to have a drug test and you have to have a medical. And there's a whole bunch of things you have to do. And if you don't pass all those things, then you can't be hired. You have to have a background check. So what? I am judging it on that because I don't believe that Mr. Yearsley would not hire somebody who was qualified. But he's not hiring anyone it, who's qualified. That, you hired him, he's not qualified. Listen, Burger listen, King certs Chris, don't count. Chris, stop. I want everybody if, muted. Well, that's fine. I have a right because I'm in effect with this. You don't listen to it. You have said everything. Mr. Yearsley is going to be gone. So you don't have to worry about that. Anymore, we know, but Chris. we want it done effective immediately. Okay, and then, then we, we can take that, our break because I can get people. We don't have to shut down because we have qualified uh, people who can relieve us. Do it effective immediately. Give me, give us 30, 60 days to write it. We and have then people who will come there. in tomorrow. I am not going to listen to all of this anymore. We've said um, everything. I'm you in here. Run, I'm run, run I'm away like you always do. Run away. We can speak. Um, iPad has is unmuted now, so maybe iPad can make their comment. Oh, can, can you hear me? I think uh, as a president of the board, you need to remove the emotion from this and review all your stuff. Has anything been done to hire a new general manager? The board has to decide if they're going to hire a new general manager. It's they really made any decision done to hire a new general manager. Gail, could we please hear from iPad now that I oh, have yeah. figured out how to yeah. unmute Go ahead. him or herself? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. This is, this is Sharon Dove. I'm sorry. My computer thing was doing it internally. So anyway, um, I attended the meeting on. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I attended the meeting on Sunday and there were a lot of really experienced people there that have uh, been in Morongo Valley forever, know the ins and outs of the fire department. The two board members were looking honestly for answers, um, getting the landscape of this. And with my background, this is a routine administrative matter. And I'm really surprised that you have already um, greased the track to the county and that's what it looks like to me this has never been presented to the to the community and if there is an underlying financial matter i have been asking for financial statements not a budget financial statements for years and i have never received one and so as far as as far as communicating with the community Obviously, there's there's um, financial matters, but we don't know exactly what they are. Um, uh, it seems like this is a routine personnel staffing matter. Yearsley's retiring. That's straightforward. Um, Brittany is probably in a good place to take over the GM. There's temporary um, or interim fire chiefs lined up. The guys and all these other fire department people have networks to get the qualified people in and I think that it's it's shocking that you would grease the track to the county I'm suspicious I'm uncomfortable with it and it I just it doesn't feel right and I this is a staffing matter this is what administrative um challenges this is just routine this is nothing it's routine you've got people telling you what the answers are and it's give give me a week and I'll do it. I'll get it done. Over. Oh, thanks. Wh what is your what is your name? Oh, I said my name, Sharon Dove. You know me. Oh, Sharon. Hi. Hi. Okay. Yeah. All right. So well, I, I just you, think you want to come in and work for the district and and do all this. What I I know. What yeah. I'm saying is I no, can. You can have my this, job. No. What I'm saying is. We could get this straightened out administratively right away. You're already, you're already like three quarters of the way there or more. All of the answers have been proposed here. Brittany as the GM, uh, interim uh, fire chiefs, the guys can pull in from their network, qualified firefighters and get to work on it. I don't, under, I mean, maybe I, I understand you feel isolated. 
um, with, with all of the pressures, but I think you can come together with people and get it solved. I really do. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Sharon. We have two more hands up, Gail. Uh, Brittany would like okay. to speak and Jake again. Okay. So Brittany needs to be unmuted. Brittany Chavez. Hey guys, um, I just wanna say this as respectfully as possible. I do not agree with you guys trying to shut down the fire department and I am going to have to stand behind the firefighters on this. We do have applicants that can come in and cover for them. We've had multiple people state that there are many different options to keep county out. And I just, I hope that you guys really take that seriously and do not shut us down and make us all jobless tomorrow. Okay, Jake, you have your hand up. Jake? Yes, ma'am. Go for it, Jake. Okay, so uh, Chief Yearsley, I do have a quick question, and if it is a yes, I would like to get copies of the denial if you did do it. Do you apply for the FEMA SAPER grant, which actually helps provide staffing funds for the fire departments? Last year, um, our captain brought that to us, and he also brought it to the board on one of the meetings when I was gone. Uh, there were some issues with uh, the fact that we had to maintain it at the end of it. He was going to bring that back and uh, he could not find the part that would say that we don't have to maintain the same employees on that safer grant. He checked into it. There was one that um, he tried that was through the union also and did not was not able to find one that did not have that that he brought back to me. So it was researched by him two different times. Okay, so I will re let the board know this. There is a grant out there. It's called the Safer Grant. It's ran by FEMA. FEMA is the government. And it helps provide funding for low income fire departments. Many fire departments use this. I can name 50 off the top of my head. This is a simple grant you can get and there are millions of other not millions but a few other grants that you guys can try okay you get the first thing we need to start off with is getting the qualified personnel applying for the safer grant so we can up wages a little bit more okay but i'm going to tell you right now i know a few applicants that have applied who have no problem with that pay grade right now okay yeah people at mcdonald's make more right now hourly but they also don't work the same amount of hours that a firefighter does Okay. There's grants and you need to know, you need to have someone on your department to write these grants. Okay. Most volunteer departments, that's how we operate. We get like a $30,000 budget a year and we're basically have to get grants to get all of our turnout gear, um, medical supplies, all uh, engines, all that other stuff. We rely heavily on grants. There's no, nowhere saying that a full-time department cannot receive a grant. You guys have gotten a grant. I believe it was the chief, it was highway traffic safety, something like that, right? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. For battery electric, uh, for battery operated uh, extrication gear. Okay. That was a grant. You guys can get more of these kind of grants for certain things to make your fire department and not waste so much of your actual budget for the fire department. You need someone who's able to be in there and delegate and allocate where all of that's going to go. I mean, there's so many more options. I'm hearing, oh, we're low funded. Oh, we're a small community. Oh, we're this. Oh, we're that. I work for a volunteer department that gets $50,000 as an allotted budget. And I can, I just secure it's a $15,000 grant. And my chief has secured many more after that. There are so many options and so many grants out there that you can apply for. So when I'm hearing, oh, we're a small budget or we don't want to raise the taxes, great. Then a person who's been in the fire service should know that there are plenty of grants to try to get. If you have applied for grants as a fire department, I'm not directing this towards anybody. <clears throat> have you been denied? And also, have you reapplied for it? You may not get it the first time, but you can go a second time, a third time, a fourth time until finally they get annoyed and they grant it to you. Okay. 
there's so many more options. So when I'm hearing this small community, no money, okay, well, what are you doing to try to bring money in other than these strike teams, which you can't use for personnel pay. I think you can only use them for pay bonuses or um, um, I can't think of the word right now, but when you want to give them a little gift or something, I guess you would say, I think you can, I'm not hundred percent sure. Why don't you try to get grants then to help your budget? There's CSD grants you guys can get to improve your office. Heck, there's CSDs who've rebuilt their buildings off of grants. Yeah, you, you, yeah, but that's how it is. Yes, Jake, thank you. Yes, ma'am, thank you. So, uh, I got something to say, Gail. All right. As for the safer grant, I think it needs to be put out there the exact facts were as the presentation was trying to be made, the individual making it was cut off, told to stop, and almost got suspended for trying to make a presentation. So we need to put facts out first. Also, Gail, your comment of unqualified people is an insult to anybody who's ever thought about trying to apply for this fire department. It is an insult to all the firefighters who are telling you they know people who can come in. So you really think our firefighters will want somebody unqualified with them? They're not going to bring anybody who's unqualified. You know, let's use a little common sense when we start making comments like that. Everybody's telling you that right now they don't want to work for years or years they won't hire them. And your comment is, well, Gary said they're unqualified. Is he the only one saying this? Are you the only one saying this? You have no business being part of the hiring process of firefighters. So thank you, Johnny. That they're unqualified. You're wrong. You don't know. I don't know. So Johnny, you you all Johnny, job. you always you always know more than anyone else. So I will I will say that that you probably know, know nope. everything. No, I never said that. Oh, but I am saying is you're calling people unqualified and you're not even qualified to make that decision. I what I am saying is I know that there are certain requirements that you have to have to be either a firefighter or a paramedic or an EMT. And there's a whole list of them. And I even think it's on some of the the material we have in the firehouse that anybody can look at to see what are the qualifications. Well, mm -hmm. I trust Mr. Yearsley goes down those qualifications. And if there are ones that are not, that he cannot get proof of, he has to say, you either have to get these qualifications so that I know that you have them, or you can't work here. It's as simple as that. And what you're all saying is that he's not to be trusted. Well, that's, that's your opinion and you can have that opinion. Um, he has kept this fire station open for four years. We've had more money than we've ever had from strike teams. He's been Incorrect. exemplary. Just let me finish, Johnny. Mm -hmm. He has been exemplary at getting strike teams and getting guys to go out that have brought money into the district so that we've never had to go into our line of credit for the last four years. He has gotten many grants for turnouts, for equipment, for, for that electric, that uh, handheld saws and stuff. And, and, and pull. he's gotten hundreds of, probably thousands of dollars worth of grants for things for the fire department. So to say that he hasn't gotten anything when we know that he has, he brings it in front of the board all the time. Uh, Gail, I'd like to answer one thing for Johnny. Um, so the our Mr. I'm not going to say his name because I know who it is, but our Mr. Concerned Citizen that is all this highly qualified has not worked in fire since 2008. So he feels he is qualified to be a captain here and his qualifications last time he worked active in fire was in 2008. Other than that, He's had nothing but a lot of problems in the fire industry, not even in the fire industry. So this person is not qualified. 
And I still wouldn't hire him even after he gets on and complains and says all of his his background because he doesn't have it. Now, there's a lot of people that come up with, I've got this, I've got that. They get an interview. We find out they don't. I find out they don't have it. And I won't put them on under me because I'm not going to be the one that has to face the problems that is dealt with when they come in without the certification. So <clears throat> not saying that I'm Mr. Perfect as a fire chief. I'm saying that Johnny is wrong. And if he wants to have the um, citizen that came on and said that he was wrongfully not put on, ask him when the last time he worked actively in a fire department job. And I think you'll have to say in 2008, the rest of them have been with other companies other than fire. What am I wrong about, Gary? You, you said I am, I'm not putting on people that come in with applications that are ready to go. Right now, I have had no new applications from anybody. So if they have applications and they don't turn them in, Johnny, how do I hire them? Okay, Gary, what I said was Gail had no business making a comment saying everybody that's coming is unqualified. That is what I said. I don't know who Concerned Citizen is. I don't know who's applied. That's not my responsibility to know that. It's like it's not Gail's responsibility to know that either. But when our firefighters are telling us they have people that can come down and work, and Gail goes, oh, no, they're not qualified. How do you know this? Well, if they don't bring it to me, well, I won't know would, if they are or not, Johnny. Why would our firefighters risk their lives to say this person can come work with me if they're not qualified? Well, our firefighters wanted to put on this guy that hadn't worked since 2008. So maybe they should read the applications closer, I guess. I don't know. But when it got to me, I shot it down because there was no background within the last few years of even being in fire. I'm just saying that the guys might have a lot of applications, but I've never received them. Someone needs human resources training. At this point, Gary, you've been a great firefighter. You've been a great fire team. Too many people are saying, the, you're the issue. We need to start listening. I have too many yeah, friends in the military when we had the same problem. And if it was everybody came back and said it was the boss, everybody started looking at the boss. Either well, we need to look into what is going wrong on the top, or we need to remove the top. Well, I'm already going, so I don't know what to keep concerned about talking about it. Just bring in your chief and get started. I mean, well, we why don't we just go ahead and promote issues? Why don't we just go ahead and promote the deputy chief? Let him run the fire department. You retire tonight. Yeah, it's not on the agenda, Johnny. We can't do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can't. He's already hired. He's already the deputy chief. He it's not on the agenda. Morning. It's not on the agenda, and we can't vote on that because it's not on the agenda. Mr. Kennedy. So if you want to have if you want to have another special board meeting, we can schedule another one, but we can't do that. And technically speaking, the board does not hire the fire chief. The Mr. board Kennedy. hires the general manager. Mr. Kennedy, can I ask you a question, sir? Yes. If Chief if Chief Yearsley were to retire tonight, Chief Brakeville is already hired as the deputy chief. Would he be allowed to step in as fire chief? The uh, the agenda is uh, is um, has been worded fire department staffing concerns and options, and it is agendized as discussion and possible action. So it would seem to me that that would be something that the board could act on. Thank you, sir. So yes, Gail, we could do that. All right. So who's going to make the motion? Fine, I'll make a motion that the board accept Gerald Usley immediate retirement allowing Chief Jim Brakeville, the deputy chief, to step in as the mm -hmm. interim fire chief. Go ahead. Is there a second? Where's Christina? There I'll isn't second. a second? Yeah, I'll second. I just didn't, couldn't find me out. OK, I want a um, roll call vote, please. 
Mr. Earsley? Gail Swart? No. Christina Brook? Abstain. Lori Klimowitz? Lori Klimowitz? Lori, where are you? Let me see if something happened with her computer. I'll I'll text her. Johnny Tolbert. Aye. Christina Gorky. Aye. Lori Klimowitz. I'm texting her to see if her computer died or something. I'm texting her. Let me see if I can call her. Lori, this is Christina. Um, we are on our public meeting still and we don't see you on here and you're not picking up your phone. So um, we are taking a vote right now. We need you to either get back on the um, Zoom or call us about what's wrong if your computer died or whatever happened. So we're waiting for you to get back on. Hmm, that, that's not like Lori to just disappear like that. Why did you abstain? I don't have to explain that. I don't have enough information is why I'm abstaining though. If you wanted to know, I don't have enough information. I can't make this gigantic of a decision without enough information. I don't have enough information. I would wonder if anybody on the board has asked Jim for sure that he can take over that quick. Uh, oh, yes, I did. Oh. I said that earlier. I spoke to Chief Brakeville before I would bring it to the board. If Chief Brakeville had told me no, then I would not have brought it to the board. They had how come asked well, to look into that, and that's why I looked into it. Well, he's right on. He's not. <laughs> He's with us. So ask him, can you take yeah. over immediately? I can do it on an interim basis. Okay, while this while the board searches for a new GM and a new chief. How many days a week could you work, Chief Break Bill? Well, I would be available um, every day, but I can only be down here about three to four days. And that's only about three, four hours a day. So what will happen when you're teaching class? I'm going to have to rely on, I'm going to have to rely on our duty crew. On your, on your what? Duty crew. And who's, who's our duty crew? The duty crew would be whoever scheduled the duty for that day. Well, how many people do we have right now on our duty crew? Today? In the whole department, how many people do we have on a duty crew that could be on duty? 
it's been two, and then some days it's been three. But to answer your question, Christina, um, if I'm in the classroom teaching or at the fire academy, I cannot leave. Thank you for giving us that information. But I am willing to help any way I can, but uh, there are certain days I just can't be here. Okay, thank you for your input. I'm trying to wait here. I got a text message. She had a family emergency. Family emergency. Oh, no. Let me see. Can I ask a question? Sorry. Doesn't four board members out of five equate to be a quorum? And yes, it does. Yes. And right now the vote is tied. So, so Chris, you, Chris, you got more information from, from Jim. Does that give you enough information to be able to make a vote that's not what you previously stated? No, I have to get some more information, but we can get that information. But right now I'm worried about my friend who's having some kind of a family emergency. So I'm texting okay. her. Okay, well, your business here is here tonight and your friend's handling her own business. Steve, 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 do you want to weigh in on this? Uh, sure, currently, uh, yes, you do have a quorum. So you are able to uh, transact business. Uh, the vote is, as I understand it, is uh, two in favor, one opposed, and one abstention on um, accepting, uh, advancing Chief Yearsley's retirement uh, to uh, immediately. So um, I think that's where it stands. That motion does not pass, uh, requires under the, under the government code, requires uh, an action, requires three affirmative votes. So um, that does not pass right now. Doug sounds so disappointed. I, I wish more of the people who I know who ought to be here to speak up for what they would like to see. I wish they were here, but they but they're not Gail, so, they're not here. We're here. I know that. I know that, Brian. I understand that. Um, Pretty loud and clear. I, I still have to do what I think is is right. And, you know, I, that's what I have to do. And that's what I'm going to do. So uh, let's move on to um, uh, is anybody willing to put forward the motion? to uh, close the, the station temporarily for between 30 days and 90 days with the county um, taking over us, over uh, covering Morongo Valley um, until we can reorganize and uh, get a full complement of three shifts with a fire chief and a general manager. Yeah, without a paramedic program. Yeah. Jeez. Um, is that, is, is, I will make that motion. I will move that we no. um, we we close the station temporarily for between thirty and ninety days with um, the contract that will have to be approved by our attorney with the county to, to um, cover us uh, with a, an ambulance with a paramedic and a EMT for medical aids and the, a fire engine for fires or large traffic accidents um, with, with also having a duty officer um, on, on the position 24 seven. Um, is there a second? To that motion. Okay, there's no second to that motion. 
Okay, so that fades. So, uh, can I make a motion? So, guys, to take over position of general manager. Say that again, Christina. A motion that we have Brittany take over temporarily the general manager position. So that Is there a second to that motion? For hiring oh. and, um, hopefully getting staffing handled. I will second that motion. Okay. Can we have a roll call vote on that? Gail Swart. No. Christina Brooke. Abstain. Lori Klimowitz. Johnny Tolbert. Aye. Christina Gorky. Aye. Okay, that doesn't go anywhere. I so really think we same. need more fact finding, Gail. I think I, I'm not in a position to make some kind of really important decision right now without us talking about this more. But this would be temporary. We've got Chief Yearsley in until the end of the year. He could still maintain the position of fire chief, allow Brittany to take over as general manager. Can't do it. They didn't work have, on hiring and working with the staff that we have. I mean, we don't even know like, no what we would offer. That way. We don't even know what we would offer or uh, offer Brittany as a salary. We don't, we, we, we're not, we don't have any of the details in order. Why not just put it back to the old general manager pay? We don't have the money. Oh, God. Cut so, down Chief Yearsley's pay then. He wouldn't be in that role at this point. Well, we have him through the, the 31st. And oh, also, yeah. I mean, we have okay. Chief Tuttle on this meeting. Oh. And I want to thank him so much for being here because I know how absolutely busy he is in the position that he has. And he's offering to help us as well and i just need time to digest all this i cannot make I need, this Brooke. kind of a decision tonight and i don't know if our attorney could give us a suggestion on how we could digest all the feedback that we have gotten tonight and be able to because one of the things i would like to see and i don't know because i'm not a staff member but i would like to see the stack of applications that we have supposedly that Brittany knows about, that we have a stack of applications, I would really like to be able to review those. I mean, I don't know if that's appropriate or it's not appropriate or if our attorney could look at them or something, but people are saying there's a stack of applications and I really would like someone to help us with that. Remember, Christina, as board members, we are not hiring firefighters. We should not be looking at those applications. And I, I am asked. a leader. I, I own a couple of businesses. I'm a teacher and I am a leader, Brian. Okay. But leaders don't make snap decisions either. This is a lot of information to process in one session. Perfect. So somebody's saying that whoever has saved morongo fire lots of applications have come in who mr kennedy who could look at those applications to try to to see if that is true or false or what because if we do have a lot of applications sitting there of qualified people and if our current director of operations has been turning those people down then my vote might be different, but I need to know uh, the facts. Well, if, if I may, I think uh, what would be appropriate, and that certainly makes sense, uh, I think it would be appropriate for um, staff to provide the board with the information as to the number of, of applications. I, I think that that would be appropriate. I, I don't think it would be appropriate for board members to go through those or for those applications to be made part of the um, agenda packet. I think that there's certain privacy issues that are implicated by those applications. Um, and in addition to that, not necessarily being the role of the board to, to do the hiring and firing, but it is appropriate for the board to know 
uh, I believe what uh, the number of applications that are sitting there, the number that have come in, the number that have been vetted, uh, and and the number that uh, have been determined not to uh, be qualified, uh, even the reasons why they were di disqualified from consideration, uh, perhaps those that were interviewed, and then and then uh, uh, you know the the conditions and even maybe given a uh, conditional job offer and then and then uh, the the conditions were were such that the job offer had to be rescinded i think all of those from a numerical standpoint would all be um, something that the board uh, could ask staff to provide um, mr kennedy could we meet in closed session to talk about why these people are are or are not qualified, or are we not allowed to know that as board members? You can you can meet in closed session to evaluate um, uh, you, your uh, chief Yearsley's uh, performance. The Brown Act does allow for the board to do that under government code section five four nine five seven. So the board could meet in closed session, and, and uh, as part of your evaluation of chief. Yearsley's performance asking that those questions. That is what I would prefer to do. I want to know how many applications, how many were vetted, how many were determined not to be qualified, what in general are they not qualified for? Why? Because if our staff reviewing those isn't providing, you know, the vetting services that we need, then my vote may have been different, but I need more information. So can we schedule a closed session? How how many hours do we have? Is it 24 hours or 48 hours? For a special board meeting, it's the notice, the agenda would need to be posted 24 hours in advance of, of, the, of the board. Well, that is what I'd like to have see happen. 24 hours. Break Bill, look at them. He already works for the department. So 24 hours is not much to, when we are faced with a monumental decision like this, 24 hours is not um, out of the question, I think, to actually evaluate our, our current director of operations and the decisions that he's been making. So why not just launch everybody the in the investigation chat is then? saying qualified people are submitting applications, but um, he's making decisions not to hire people. So I would like what to... Suggest we have a closed session. Um, I, I apologize for I apologize for interrupting. Um, I would like to ask Chief Yearsley. Um, his concerns were that the people who are applying are not qualified. Uh, my question is, um, Chief Yearsley, do you have all of the, the qualifications to, uh, to be chief. And um, according to San Bernardino County, are you qualified to be chief? Well, I guess that's muted at this point since I'm leaving anyway. Uh, some people believe I do and some don't. So, I mean, it's not a point of me now, it's a point of you need to put somebody else on and then I'll be gone. So you're, you're, you're backpedaling to something that's already a an old issue and it's be you know we're past that and Shana, okay so i'm, a, question I'm assuming that. i'm assuming that the answer to that question is no you are not qualified let me answer that question for the you, board Shana. can set qualifications for each position. thank you christina yeah the board is allowed with the the what laws i've read we are allowed to set the um certification levels and and uh qualifications each jurisdiction and chief Brakebill, you are the one who taught me this so could you please state it about finding a fire chief and how it's up to the jurisdiction to decide because that is what we did when we um when we hired him four years ago can you please quote that for me chief Brakebill? it's up to the authority having jurisdiction, which in this case is the board of directors, to set the qualifications for the person to run the fire department called the fire chief. So I have when we hired Chief Yearsley, we set qualifications. He met those qualifications. 
So he is qualified to be our fire chief. So that's the answer so, to that. Uh, okay. uh, thank you. Um, uh, my question, I guess, would be then, would the, because the board set those qualifications, if something happened that um, we find he's not qualified to represent our community, would the board or the community be liable for that uh, instance? Okay, yes. please keep in mind that the board did not hire Chief Yearly. Johnny, Johnny, Chief let Yearly Steve Kennedy answer that. Johnny, 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 let Steve Kennedy answer that, please. Steve? Well, as far as, as liability goes, uh, the, the, uh, the district has, um, uh, has insurance coverage through uh, SDRMA, Special Districts um, Risk Management Association, um, and uh, that coverage um, protects the district and uh, the constituents for uh, any liability uh, arising out of errors or omissions. Uh, so uh, the uh, the question as to whether there's coverage, you do have coverage. I uh, would depend on individual instances whether or not there would be um, whether it's a matter of negligence, or gross negligence, or uh, or whether some issues of strict liability uh, would apply, and also the the nature of the damages. So it may you, there's always a potential that something uh, significant could happen that would go beyond. Uh, beyond the coverage that that the district has, uh, so I, it depends on the nature of the situation. But it's it, there's the potentials there, but the district does have coverage through uh, SDRMA. And and what 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 is your the other thing that we have to deal with is the fact that we have two employees who have been working more hours than is than is really sanctioned and what kind of liability we have there as a board well, I, yeah i mean i think that that is that's an issue that the board has um has struggled with obviously is you are the board is stuck with two uh two areas of liability uh that are, are problematic one is if there was um if if someone impaired because they have been working too long uh goes to uh, an event and, uh, and and acts in a negligent manner, then yeah, there's exposure to liability there for the district overworking uh, those employees. Uh, similarly, if if the board were to um, you know close the fire department down and then there was some, a fire event and there wasn't sufficient backfill as a result for that uh, for that issue, then there's potential liability there as well. So uh, there's there's no easy answer on this. I know the board has has really struggled with how to best uh, provide service uh, to to your constituents. Uh, I know all of you have really worked hard to to figure out what the best answer is, um, and uh, you know, and and I think that that needs to be respected. That this is not an easy decision, and that you're looking at areas of potential exposure to liability either way around. Um, and, and so for that, uh, I think that that's sort of what, what you've really struggled with on this issue. And it's not an easy answer. And, and any, any, uh, any indication that, that this is a simple answer is simply not, not accurate. This is a tough decision and should be respected as such. Mr. Thank King, you. may I ask you a um, question? <laughs> Go ahead, Johnny. Uh, Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Um, have you received a copy of our latest MOU, sir? Yes, I did. Okay, we had an issue brought up by um, the firefighters tonight saying that union busting or whatever, because we'd be breaking the MOU out of a job for 30 to 90 days. Have you seen anything in that in the MOU? Um, that, I haven't researched it for that on that particular issue. And so uh, I'm not uh, comfortable answering that question. No, no problem. I think it, okay, and it you know, and it also involves even if it's not covered by the by the four corners of the contract of the MOU, there may be 
other areas of liability, tort liability, uh, that kind of thing that that uh, that might apply as well. So that's the thing that uh, that I would want to take a look at, and um, and I think that you know also looking at I I had uh, mentioned earlier that the you know the need to look at the contract from the county would also be something that I would recommend if that was something that the, that the board was considering, um, and that the, there may be something in there that that would. Um, you know, that, that uh, might sway a, a board member's decision on whether that was a good idea or not. Thank you, mm -hmm. sir. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be comfortable just voting for that without actually seeing what in the world a potential draft contract would even look like. You know, it looks to me like we're not gonna be able to solve this tonight. So I would like to, um, ask the board to set up um, another special meeting. Uh, I guess it would have to be Friday. We can't do it. We can't do it because today's Wednesday and we have to give a 24 hour notice. So are you all available on Friday? Today's Tuesday, Gail. Pardon? Today's Tuesday, not Wednesday. Oh, okay. So we could do it Thursday. Are you all available on Thursday? I Christina can be available Gorky? on Thursday, but okay. what I don't understand is why is it okay or why is everyone okay to have our current staff continue to work while we have more meetings, but we can't work to replace our general manager tonight so that someone else can be in charge of hiring processes. I but agree with Christina, Gorky. Christina, to hire someone, there's all this stuff that you have to have done. You have to have, I've said it before, they have to have a background check. They have to, all She's already working there. Right. She's already working there. Right. She, Brittany's already part of our staff. No, there. no, I'm talking, I, no, I'm talking about if she hires people, right, that they, she they aren't going to be able to be hired immediately but if she's not in charge she can't take those steps to evaluate someone and get background checks done there also is emergency hiring that is a thing if we put someone else in charge of these positions we're still having our guys on staff the same way they are now under well, chief yearly which seems to be a big issue with the current staff that we have and getting other applicants in. So we have a solution, at least temporarily, because the option of always shutting down temporarily could happen with Brittany in charge as general manager in 30 days. If she's not able to fill positions as we're hoping, we'd be in the exact same spot with just different management in place. Well, we voted on that and it didn't pass because two of us are not sure that we have enough information to, right. to, put, to put Brittany in that position, which is a very, you know, it's a huge responsibility position. And I don't have enough real information about Brittany to make that decision. And we voted and it didn't pass. So- All right, then on top of that, you know, curious what Christina's um, interest in as far as knowing how many applicants we've had in is this going to be in the last 30 days or is this going to be something we're going to need to know over the last year of time because that could have made a difference as far as where our staffing would be looking at today with applicants oh, guys. Coming in for the last year i'm happy with what what you might suggest director gorky how far back do you think we should go i mean i'd figure at least a year to two years Ideally, when we're hiring someone, we hire them to keep their position, not to, you know, be in for three weeks and out again. You know, it's not the last 30 days that make a difference with where our applicants are standing. Yeah. So if he can explain that there's these candidates, there were, you know, 79 candidates. I vetted them. Um, uh, 99, 100% did not have the certifications that were needed or whatever it is. And, and if he could show us, you know, what, what was deficient, then we might have a problem 
with our current director of operations if I don't get that if I don't get an answer. Quick question, how are you going to know if he's providing you the exact number? I mean, if you guys can't count don't them they, yourself. I mean, I would think that they would log them in in a book or something. There's some there's got to be something and Brittany's saying that she knows of a stack of applications, so we do have a staff member who is our staff member right now, our administrative assistant, and we really appreciate her. So I don't know if Steve Kennedy would say it's appropriate to have her come in to the closed session as well. Um, yeah, we could, we could, the board can, can make that decision. It might, it might impact how we agendize it. Um, but yeah, I think we can, with board can, the board can bring in uh, Ms. Chavez for that for that purpose. I would like that to happen. Okay, so can we um, schedule a meeting for Thursday? Would Ms. Chavez be able to be there on Thursday? Brittany, can you be there on Thursday? Yeah, I can. Okay, and do we need to schedule it uh, after seven o'clock, Steve, do uh, you have you have other meetings? I do. I do have a board meeting uh, at six thirty um, in Hellendale, uh, on uh -huh. Thursday, and it's and it, it'll probably be a long one. Uh, just a heads up because um, they've got a rate hearing. So um, okay, yeah, that that would be Thursday night would be problematic for me unless you were to have it earlier than six thirty. What about unless we're Friday? having it when? Earlier than six thirty. Like if we had a um, four thirty or five. Yes, I could do that. We, I could do that. I won't be able to do that. Okay, what time could you do it, Christina? Probably closer to seven o'clock. Um, oh, okay, so Thursday doesn't sound like a good day then. Driving back. What about Friday? Friday. I could do Friday. I'm available on Friday. Friday. Can you do it, Ms. Chavez? Can you do it on Friday? Yeah, I can. Okay. What time, oh. Steve, on Friday? I'm available anytime on Friday. Okay. So six o'clock? Yes. Is everybody, can everybody be there at six? Yes. Tink? Is that a yes? Tink? Okay, Johnny, thumbs up. Did Johnny, Johnny give a thumbs up? I can be there Friday. I also okay. might want to, I think we might want to look into um, individuals who said they've put applications in or willing to put applications in. Their qualifications also should be brought to the meeting. We have a lot of people out there saying they're willing to come. So, okay. All that should be brought to the meeting for everybody, if, for those numbers, I should say. I know we're not looking at um, resumes because we can't, but those numbers should be there. Okay, um, so six o'clock on Friday and uh, Mr. Kennedy, will you agendize that for us? Yes, I'll work. Please? Absolutely, I'll work with your staff on that. No problem. Okay, and um, uh, I, I'm still, now here we are, it's Wednesday. And did we say it was Wednesday or Tuesday? I've had so many meetings. Today is Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Yeah, this Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so now we're talking about our two guys working three more full days before we can make any decisions on anything. And I am just, I am so worried about the liability that we are yeah, taking I'm, on because I'm not we're keeping it off. Not three more days. I, I, you know, like the whole point of having the meeting tonight oh, was so that right. we could get something going for the guys. Yeah, but we got so much information, Gail. It's just so much information to digest in one night to be able to do something that's. A, a, the most gigantic decision. I've been serving on this board for almost 10 years. And I, I need to have some more information 
to be yeah, able to I, I, make I, I, a good decision. So, yeah, I, just I mean, there, the chat was saying that the, the men themselves are chiming in that they are getting enough rest in the fire department. They have only okay. one to one and a half calls a day. Um, and um, it's not like it's, let's say the Burbank fire department where they're going out every hour yeah. or something. I know. So okay. I think we have to be as prudent as possible. This is a very important decision. Um, and I don't know if the county could even show us like what a proposal might even look like by then. I don't know. I don't want to take anything off the table. I want to just digest all this information the community has come forward with. Christine, I think that um, Scott could actually tell you it should that it should be done tomorrow, I think. So we might be able to have it at that meeting. Scott, do you know approximately when we'd have that done? Yeah, I don't have a, an exact timeline yet. Uh, I talked to county council this evening and they were still working on it. So our county attorney is working with our grants and contract folks to draft it up. So um, I don't have a, a concrete answer on that. Okay. And I just want people to know that this is the first time we're hearing of this county proposal tonight. We did not grease any skids or anything like this. I think that um, our director of operations did what is prudent to find out what all the options could possibly be. And we're very grateful um, that Chief Tuttle has stayed on this, this Zoom meeting with us this entire time to hear what concerns we have in the community and in our department and so forth. And we appreciate your experience in being able to help us through this very hard time that we're going through. So, so quick question, Chief Yearsley, did you reach out to CAL FIRE and see if they were able to also maybe provide a better coverage than Cal, uh, County FIRE? Like maybe actually put an engine inside the station and you run know, from Jake, it? Jake, it would be nice if you'd wait to be called on by the, um, the board. That wasn't my question, sir. Sorry. Answer the question, Jerry. Excuse me, Johnny? I was just mentioning the fact Answer that they need to be question. called on. Yes, I did put in a call to them and they had not called me back. Thank you. And Cal Fire doesn't have paramedics, does it? Yes, they do. Riverside County Fire oh, does okay. definitely has paramedics. 36 and 37 do have, uh, okay. have them on their trucks. Okay, so uh, we are gonna have a meeting on Friday at six o'clock. Um, yeah, we have a hand and, up. And uh, Chris Chavez. Oh, I just wanted to state about Chris? the, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, I just wanted to state yeah. we're okay with staying that extra bit of time. Like Director Brooks said, we don't run that much call volume, so we do get plenty of uh, rest. So just wanna let you know we're okay with that. Thanks a lot, Chris. We really appreciate it. Um, okay, so there was no action on the first item on the agenda. The second item is forming a committee to find a general manager. Well, I don't know if we need a committee. We just need people to put in their applications and the, the board can look at them. I mean, if the committee can find people that want to uh, become the general manager and can get all the, you know, their background and what we need to know, um, they can bring it to the board at any time. We need to um, give direction to staff to start flying the position of general manager so that we can get, yes. in, that we can get in applications and resumes, resumes and cover letters. And then depending on how many we get, we may need to form an ad hoc committee to narrow it down. So we're not doing 20 interviews. In the past, we've had up yeah. to 18 people come in with, with um, resumes. So that was why I suggested doing the ad hoc committee. So we should give, we should um, direct staff to find a position of general manager, start collecting um, resumes and cover letters, and then let us know um, how many we have. So then we have to decide if we're going, 
how many we're going to offer interviews to. And if we have more than, we, than we're going to do interviews for, we need to put an ad hoc committee together to trim it down. Okay. That's how we've done it the past two times that we've actually done um, open hiring for general manager. Okay. Also, um, I did see um, Mr. Miller asked for his letter to be read. Pardon? What did you say? Mr. Miller asked for his letter to be read. Okay. Johnny, before we get off on that, about the this committee, we would also, the committee, if we do appoint a committee, they would need to look at the fact that right now, what we have in place is a job description for director of operations, which means having both qualifications as administrator and also fire chief. And what would need to happen would need the, that job description would need to come back to the board for, um, you know, a vote about whether we're going to separate back out those um, positions. And we would also need to know how that would be funded. Okay. So we don't have a general manager job description right now. We have a director of operations job description right now and contract. We don't have that right now. So how do you want to move forward on that? We can pull up the general manager jobs description um, of, that we've had in the past, and we can use well, that. Well, we would as have a to bring it to the place. board because remember we had to take a vote, a board vote, to combine those positions. Right. And we would have to make another vote to dismantle that. Right. Right. Okay. But so that's see, that's another detail. Put it on the agenda for Friday. Huh? Put it on the agenda for Friday. I don't know if that can be in a closed session. It might have to be in an open session. Steve would know. Well, the whole thing is keep in mind that we have to do, before we can go into a closed session, we have to open the meeting. Right, and so that's what Steve would have to tell us if we could discuss that in open or closed session. Okay, but well, I know we can do it if we didn't have open session before the closed session. We could uh, we could agendize it for closed session. Close The board can meet in closed session under Five four nine five seven for a public agency uh, public employment appointment. So that can be discussed uh, in closed session under under that uh, that provision of the Brown Act. Okay, thank you. So we'll need to put that on there too. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to read uh, Sean Miller's uh, letter, which is dated November twenty ninth, twenty twenty one. To whom it may concern, my name is Sean Miller and I've lived in Morongo Valley most of my life. I joined the Morongo Valley Fire Department as a reserve in 2013 and earned my Firefighter One status under the guidance of Chief Jock Johnson. I graduated from College of the Desert Fire Academy in June 2014, then attended Sacramento State College and there earned my paramedic license in 2019. I worked for Medic Ambulance in Vallejo from 2014 to 2020, first as an EMT, then as a training officer, and finally as a paramedic. In August of 2020, my family and I moved back to Morongo Valley and I approached the Morongo Valley Fire Department to offer my services as an on-call paramedic. I submitted my application directly to the office prior to my family's move, but never heard back. I contacted them two months later I live five minutes from the station, thus could be available in emergency situations. I did not ask for guaranteed shifts or benefits as I am currently, currently a full-time paramedic with Morongo Basin Ambulance, three days on and four days off. I was willing to work for the department's standing paramedic wages, making me a paid employee covered by the station's liability insurance. However, I was only offered the position as a reserve volunteer firefighter. I agreed. The first several shifts I worked, I was only paramedic on duty, thus assumed the responsibility of acting as the solo paramedic. It became clear that Chief Yearsley wanted me to work as a volunteer paramedic. This is an unusual request for EMS. Volunteer EMTs are common, but volunteer paramedics are not. When questions about when questioned about this, 
and more notably about my professional liability coverage as a volunteer rather than a paid employee, Chief Yearsley was unable to give a sufficient answer. <clears throat> I was told he had to speak with Captain Gorder. When I asked Captain Gorder, I was told he had to talk to the chief. I was never able to get a clear answer as to my employment status with the Morongo Valley Fire Department. I was not willing to put my license in jeopardy as a volunteer acting as paramedic without guaranteed liability coverage. Then without warning or communications, my locker was cleaned out, department issued gear revoked, and I was told I was no longer on staff at the Morongo Valley Fire Department. Surprisingly, it was after this that I received several calls from Captain Gorder and Engineer Noriega asking me to come in to again work as a volunteer paramedic. I did not accept these shifts. Chief Yearsley's lack of leadership in the department and still the lack of confidence in me. Confidence that is critical on scene where we as EMS professionals risk our lives on a daily basis. I am still willing to help the Morongo Valley Fire Department as I feel strongly about our community keeping its fire department local. However, I cannot do so under the guidance of Chief Yearsley. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at 760-774-9093. Sincerely, Sean Miller, Firefighter Paramedic. So I will make a copy of this for all the board members and I will um, email it to you tomorrow. I'll scan it into my computer. So you'll all have a copy. Thank you. You're welcome. So if there is, I think we've had um, all the, the uh, comments from the public. Um, can we move on to, um, can we move on to uh, director's reports? Vice President Brooke. Wow. Um, basically, I really appreciate everybody who came out to the meeting tonight to give us input. This is not an easy job that we do as volunteers. Um, luckily, we've been here a long time. Um, a lot of us have worked together for a long time. We mutually respect each other. And I know that we will make a good decision because um, you know, that's, that's what we have done for the past decade, at least that I've been here it's my last year. It's my night, I'm in my ninth year now. One more year is 10 years, which is enough. And I hope that there'll be people in the community that wanna come forward because last time I was ready to stop having my shift, you know, but there was nobody that came forward that wanted to be a director. And so the Board of Supervisors um, appointed me and Lori again to be um, directors. And we didn't say we can't do it, even though we were tired. It's, it's, this is a very tiring, tiring job and it's kind of thankless at times. And, um, but it's a community I live in and I love. And I love working here with the students at our school. And so I'm confident that we can make a good decision once we have the information that we need. So thank you for bearing with us. Thank you firefighters who are getting as much rest as you can so that you can perform your duties in as best of, of a manner as you can. Um, and uh, I look forward to our meeting on Friday and then being able to make our decision. Director Tolbert. I'd like to thank everybody that attended the meeting tonight. I heard a lot of good suggestions, a lot of good comments. I thank you very much. Please keep in mind that myself and Director Gorky will be holding another ad hoc committee meeting this Sunday at the NPR at 1 p.m. We invite you to come down, give us your ideas so we can bring them back to the board. To the two gentlemen who have worked all the hours at the fire station, thank you. I can't thank you enough. Brittany Chavez, I know all the extra, extra work you've been doing lately and for the last few years. I can't thank you enough. You've kept us going, and I know you wanted to keep us going now. I do believe that we have options on the table to keep this fire department 
operating and running smoothly. And I do believe it's time for the board to step up and just say, look, we're gonna do what's best for the citizens of this district and not for one individual. I've said it before and I will keep saying it. I feel that some members of this board are looking to take care of one individual and not their constituents. And that needs to stop. Let's take the emotion out of it and work on straight facts. Thank you. Uh, Director Gorky. Um, well, I appreciate everyone that was willing to join the meeting and stick with us for as long as they did. Um, I know it's probably one of the bigger turnouts that we've had in a meeting in quite some time. So I think it's important that the community gets involved and hopefully now that we have some additional special meetings going, we can keep community engagement going through this um, with the overall goal of keeping the fire department going and hopefully making it um, uh, you know, robust staffing and coverage for the community. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank uh, our two fire, our firefighter and paramedic that have been working tirelessly for the district. Um, and everyone here appreciates your hard work, and we're just trying to find a way to keep um, service here somehow in Morongo Valley and keep it safe for you and for the the people of morongo valley thank you steve kennedy for being here for the whole meeting and chief tuttle and um, our own fire chief mr year um chief chief break bill there are some threats being uh, made in the in the chat. I need you to um, copy the entire chat right now and save it. Okay. Can you do that? Yes. Thank you. Gail needs to unmute her okay. phone. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, so thank you all very much for being here. We'll meet again on Friday at six o'clock um, and everyone will get uh, the agenda and it'll be posted. Um, it, it may not seem like it, but I know that all the board members and staff are doing their best, the best that they can for Morongo Valley. And there are lots of things that don't seem always upfront with the public because they can't, they don't know all of the things that are going on. And perhaps there'll be more things revealed at the meeting on uh, Friday. So thank you all for being here. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Thank you guys for being here. See you on, on Friday. Chief Breakbill, have you copied the entire chat?